Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. In my recent videos I've been taking a closer look at the incredible site of Sacsayhuaman and how many of the structures we see, from the tower on top of the main hill to the large circular feature in the Satuna sector and the polygonal masonry basins all relate to water. This water emanated from springs that were located in the sacred wakas, the carved natural limestone outcrops that surround the Kokachinkarnas basin. And in my last few videos, I've presented compelling evidence that really is hard to refute. Today though they do all appear to be dry, and so people are still looking for physical evidence that water does emanate from the wakas. They want to see it with their own eyes. The fact is though, it's unlikely to happen today for various reasons. From earthquakes and geological faulting, to changes in the water table and groundwater flow, changes from new building projects, modern piping, waterworks and so on. But it's thanks to a friend of the channel who sent me some fantastic images this week. And these images show clear undeniable evidence that sacred wackers were sites of natural springs. Just 200 metres to the east of Kokachinkarnas, there is another isolated carved sacred waka in a field. It's labelled on Google Maps as Kalis Pukyo, but there isn't a lot of information available online. This site is important because we have another large carved limestone outcrop, very similar to the examples at Sacsayhuaman. There is also a small water basin or reservoir surrounding it, and there are channels that are lined with masonry that run from it. But what makes this site so important is that the basin still fills with water every year. The spring is still active and the water emanates straight from the waka, proving beyond doubt that the importance of carved limestone outcrops was of course their relationship with natural springs. These are the all important sources of water to the Inca agricultural way of life. And when you see my forthcoming video, where I decode the symbols of the golden altar of the Coracancha, you'll understand why they're so important. Wakas were almost viewed as gods. They were living stones. According to Guam and Poma, a Quechua nobleman of the 16th century, in August in the dry season every year, the Inca would sacrifice their own children as well as animals to the Wakas, as well as giving offerings of ground corn and shells. At the start of the rainy season in October, a hundred white llamas were sacrificed to the principal whackers of the empire, a great plea for rain. In February, great sums of gold and silver were offered to the whackers. In the Inca world, there were principal whackers and also whackers of the commoners. There was also a belief that whackers were petrified ancestors. So, we are now looking at a sacred waka just 200 metres away from the main Kokachinkarnas reservoir of Sacsayhuaman, which still has a natural spring in the 21st century. Go to Google Earth and scroll through the years, and you can see times when its little man-made reservoir is full, as well as times when it's half full, and other times when it's empty. This site should really be included in every tour of Cusco and Sacsayhuaman, and for all I know it probably is, because seeing this helps us to visualise how Sacsayhuaman would have looked and what various structures were around Cocachincarnas. I've spent the past week researching the Inca world view. I've studied this diagram in so much detail, and I've got a 30 minute video that's in the works. Water, weather and forces of nature were all at the heart of the Inca way of life, a way of life that was all focused on agriculture. Rituals and ceremonies related to nature took place all year round, and after my recent research, I'm left in no doubt that Cocachincarnas at Sacsayhuaman was the main reservoir for Cusco, for irrigation purposes to aid agriculture. But that also means it was a very important ceremonial landscape, and large-scale sacrifices and offerings would have taken place throughout the year, especially if it was the main source of water for the main city of the Inca Empire. There are many historic stories of hidden gold at Sacsayhuaman, riches that are still hidden to this day, and when you understand how much gold was offered to the gods of nature, including the sacred whackers at important Inca sites, you can really understand why. 
Furthermore, there was probably no site more important than Sacsayhuaman. Agriculture was everything, and hence water was everything, and this was the main reservoir of Cusco. Looking around the landscape of Cusco and Sacsayhuaman, and I think it's even possible to locate either destroyed or buried sacred wackers. This is probably the site of another wacker right next to Calispucio, and just to the south we can see the effects of spring water running down the hill. Again, surely the site of another sacred spring and maybe a long lost wacker. There are so many sites just like this, and whether or not they've been excavated I don't know. But with an understanding of sacred wackers and sacred springs, as well as the fact they were the sites of offerings, it's easy to identify sites that are worthy of archaeological investigation. Make sure you subscribe to Ancient Architects, because in the next few days I'll be releasing a video decoding the golden altar of the Corocancha, giving you a detailed insight into the Inca worldview information that will help you to further understand the incredible sights of the Inca. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.